as I have passed electricity to the sharp mini split air conditioner motherboard. The electric socket where I plugged the motherboard wires has turned off the electric breaker. I don't know why it happened. So let's check for the problem. I will first remove the motherboard from its box and tell you how to do it. As I have experienced many techs who bring the sharp indoor motherboard to me, they usually damage the box while removing the motherboard from it. I will tell you its correct method. First, pull the sponge from the back. I have used a tester for doing this. It is strongly attached through the glue to the box. I am pushing the lock with the help of the tester and pulling the PCB with a tweezer. It has easily come out of the box. The PCB is locked with this plastic hook. I am putting one leg of the tweezer inside the PCB board through the empty space in the corner of the box. I will use this nose plier to do the rest of the work. I have pressed the hook. I will push the motherboard towards me. And see the motherboard has been separated from the hooks. I am doing the same on the other corner of the motherboard also. It has come out from this hook as well. The motherboard has blown from here. The PCB has been short circuit. The blown up component of this motherboard is its fuse. Whenever the fuse burns in a circuit, it does not make the problem again. This means something else is bad in this motherboard. So first of all let's check whether the fuse beeps on the continuity mode or not. The fuse is not beeping in continuity mode. But it was still making the electric breaker trip. This brown wire is the phase wire, and blue is the neutral wire. The phase wire is attached to this fuse. The phase wire is disconnected from the circuit. But the neutral is directly joined in the system. And is directly moving in this circuit. As it is making the home electric breaker to trip. It means this side of the circuit could be bad. A line filter is installed here. The line filter physically seems to be fine. As a wire is rounded on the core in some counts. When it burns, it could not make this issue, but yes it could if both the coils of the line filter are shorted together. This motherboard has no such issue. Further, a bridge rectifier is installed. This bridge rectifier could be problematic. Or any component further in the motherboard could be faulty. I have set the multimeter on diode mode. This cut on the diode indicates that this is the positive side of the rectifier. I am putting the positive probe on the positive pin. The negative probe with the negative pin of the rectifier. It shows no short circuit. This trace in this motherboard has heated up. But it has not disconnected. Now I will place the negative probe on the positive pin and the negative pin on the positive pin of the rectifier. It is showing 0.479 voltage drop on the multimeter. This means these pins of the diodes are fine. Let's check the next one. It is showing zero value on these pins. This means it has a short circuit on these pins of the rectifier. I will check the reading on the next pin as well. It is showing a 0.479 voltage drop on this pin. One of the diodes in the rectifier has short circuited. The bridge rectifier is bad in this motherboard now. I will desolder the rectifier from the motherboard. I will desolder the fuse as well. The fuse is of 3.15 amperes and 250 volts. The number of the rectifier is GBL2J. This is a 2 amperes rectifier. Next, a capacitor is installed in this circuit. I will check now whether it is good or bad. I have set the multimeter on continuity mode. I will test the capacitor. Take care of the polarity of the probes. It is making no beep on the capacitor. I have changed the polarity of the probes to check the capacitor. It is not making any beep sound on the multimeter. If the capacitor is good, it does not beep. The capacitor is considered good when it beeps for 3 seconds and then stops beeping. The capacitor should have beeped. Sometimes, if the capacitor does not beeps, it could be disconnected internally. Now it depends, this capacitor could be faulty or not. The capacitor is of 33 microfarads and 450 volts. So I will also change this capacitor for my insurance, because I am doubtful whether it is good or bad.
Now I will test the motherboard. I will pass the electricity through the motherboard. It is not turning on with the remote. It is also not turning on with the emergency button of the motherboard. I worked on it off the camera it was working, but now it is not turning on. I think the problem is with the switching IC, so I will change that as well. This switching IC is installed in this motherboard. I don't have the same number IC. I will install its replacement. The number is not the same but the pin configuration is the same. The number is MIP2F2. Now let's check it again. It has operated through the remote. The fan blower motor has also turned on. I have turned it off. Now I will turn it on through its emergency switch or button. Yes, it is turned on with the button. The third test to check the motherboard, I will do is that. I will cut off the electricity in this condition from the motherboard. And I have cut the electric supply. I have to check whether it auto powers on or not. I have turned on the electricity supply and it has powered on automatically and the fan blower has also started. And this is how I fix this problem. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch our next videos. And subscribe. Thank you.